if you thought the traveling salesperson problem was hard, let's talk about the vehicle routing problem. Uh, it's like the traveling salesperson problem times 10 or 50 plus you have to decide which packages go on which trucks and then also route the trucks to have each truck travel optimally. So um, here's a screenshot from a software that a friend of mine wrote. Um, so we have a depot and we have um, uh, 11 routes, um, but the, uh, the routes aren't fixed. It's up to us to decide which packages go on the purple truck, for example, and then how to route the purple truck. And notice maybe we could have routed this package on the purple truck and set up on the greenish truck. Um, so it's uh, more complicated than the, just the traveling salesperson problem, but it includes the traveling salesperson problem. Um, uh, so something like UPS or FedEx does this every day, right? Uh, and I've heard that the average UPS truck starts with a, about 150 packages, so that's a lot more than we're seeing on this. Um, UPS actually won a prize for a new routing system they have called Orion, and you can go read about it here or watch a presentation where they get into some of the nitty-gritty. You might have heard things like UPS trucks will never turn left because turning left takes more time than turning right, and it's also a higher risk. You might hit a pedestrian, you might get hit uh, by an oncoming car. So it's not true that they never turn left, it's just that they try to route to avoid turning left if they really can avoid it. And I think it's not so much that they would re like make three right turns instead of a left. It's more like on this route, would you do this route um, clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, if you did it counterclockwise, you'd be making a left here and a left here, uh, where if you did it clockwise, you'd be making rights there. So it might be something relatively simple like that. Um, uh, the Operations Research and Management Science Society informs publishes a magazine like this. And they do serving, uh, they do surveys of software for various purposes. And they ha did a survey of routing software. And let's go take a look at that. So they had all these routing softwares. They asked, how long does it take to solve a problem with 50 routes and a thousand stops? So that's 20 per vehicle. And with uh, two hour t hard time windows. Time windows means that the businesses you're dropping off at um, they say, well, we'll accept deliveries between this time and that time, apparently two hours apart, um, and probably randomly scattered throughout the day for this problem. Um, uh, so that's unlike the, the UPS or FedEx problem usually, right? So it, that makes the problem harder. And you can see how long does it take to solve these thousand stop problems with 50 trucks? Two minutes, five minutes, three minutes, five to 10 minutes. Um, are they solving them optimally? Well, the algorithms they're talking about here are heuristic, heuristic, um, simulated annealing. We'll talk about that in a little while. Uh, genetic algorithms. So these aren't guaranteed um, optimal, but they're probably within a few percent of optimal, maybe not guaranteed a few percent of optimal. Um, but still, even with large problems here, modern software and modern computers can do a reasonably good job optimizing. So here's a question to think about. How is the school bus routing problem different than the vehicle routing problem? I mean, school buses are vehicles, but take a sec to think about it. Let's go back and look at a sample solution here. All right, did you pause and think about it? Here's one thing I think about for school bus routing. For one thing, the school bus depot might not be the same as the school location, probably isn't usually, so you're not necessarily going out and back from the school. But even ignoring that, that's fairly simple to deal with um, mathematically. Um, think about this kid on the purple route. Let's say the, the bus leaves the school, picks up this kid, and then all these other kids. That kid is going to be sitting on the bus a long time going away from the school and then spending time coming back. When that kid could have, if that kid had gotten picked up last, wouldn't have taken that long. But then this kid has the same issue. Um, so with vehicle routing, you don't really care how long a package sits on the vehicle, but here we do care about how long a kid sits and maybe we'd want to collect these kids first and then wind our way into the school. Um, but we also care about uh, the driver's time, um, fuel usage, etc. Um, so there's a mix of things to think about for the school routing, a school bus routing problem that aren't so important in the vehicle routing problem. Uh, so if someone wanted to do a project comparing school bus routing to vehicle routing, I think that would be really interesting.